guys, what's up? It's Billy from Finding Fresh Air. So today we're gonna get started with cutting the hole and mounting the Max Air roof fan. I'm gonna show you guys everything that comes with it in the box. It's all back there on the workbench. Show you that in the next video and we'll get started. Hey guys, so here's everything that comes with the Max Air Fan Deluxe. That would be this model. And I forget the exact model number. I could put that in the description. I'll put a link to it. But um, we got the one with the smoke, uh, smoke covered lid, not the white lid. So there's a different model number for that. Um, yeah, so everything that comes in the box is the flange that goes on the outside, on the upper. Um, this is the interior flange, which we'll have to trim. They just give you a lot of material, uh, depending on the roof of the van or RV, um, the thickness of it. And this is the upper flange, which are gonna be mounting to the top after we cut the hole in our van. Um, this is the actual fan itself. This is the top, still got the plastic on. This is the bottom that will be in the interior. I've got some knobs and instructions and some controls down there. And it comes with all the mounting screws necessary. Um, some electrical supplies, as well as the remote control instructions. And we're gonna get going on that real soon. The only other additional thing that we've purchased to, to, to do this is this roof vent fan adapter. If you could see that, but we'll take some more pictures of it. But um, this is uh, came highly recommended. We got this from a store on eBay. The guy is actually located in Hood River. He does some awesome work and he's very helpful over the phone. I've been talking to him a couple of times to make sure I do this process right. Um, he recommended uh, 3M window weld to glue that adapter to the roof after we cut the hole. And he also recommended flex seal for the sealant after we screw the roof flange to it and the fan, get the fan on there to seal up all those holes and gaps and cracks. Um, so we're gonna be taking all his advice on that. And um, yeah, I think that's it for now. We'll take you guys through the whole process and we'll get it, we'll get it going. Hey guys, what's up? So first step is we're gonna get this flange here from Impact Products that we got on eBay. And we're gonna place that where we want the fan. This is gonna be the marker for our, uh, our hole. So measure seven times, <laughs> cut once. I'm taking the measure twice, cut once thing even further because it's a hole in our brand new van in the roof. It's a 14 by 14 hole in the roof of our brand new van. So I'm gonna measure a lot and I'm gonna trace this thing out and I'll show you guys this a little in greater detail. Right now you're on the tripod with the GoPro. Um, so we can get some video done because I'm by myself again. <laughs> so I also wanted to bring up the actual flange for the fan itself instead of just the adapter. Um, you know, like I said from the start, triple checking everything. And um, this is another reason why you should get this adapter from Impact Products. And just to be clear, to say this right from the start, we're not sponsored by anybody. We don't get paid to say anything by anyone. If we do, there's a couple companies, a couple companies I work with with photography. If we do mention those, I will mention that we are we work with that, those companies. But as far as everything else goes, unless I say it, we don't work with them. Anyway, Impact Products on eBay. They're out of Hood River, guy's great. And um, this is the reason why you, well, you don't have to, but why I went with the adapter, is see this little rocker in this? It's rocking back and forth. It's because the ceiling or roof of the fan isn't exactly flat or straight, exactly. There's actually nothing straight on this fan. <laughs> um, but, um, except maybe the frame somewhere. But um, this, what this does is the actual curved shape of the roof of the van, which you can't really see, it's very slight. And on top is perfectly flat. So the flange will, this will seed to the roof perfectly and the flange will seed to that perfectly. So just want to give you a little rundown of that. All right guys, so here it is. Measured seven times, like I said. Uh, measured the inside to make sure I'm clear of everything. Uh, measured from the front ribs there to this to make sure I'm clear of everything. From the back, from another point and then from each side. Um, it's a pretty easy spot. I'm not too worried about it, to be honest with you. Um, it's a 14 by 14 hole. I will say this adapter is, if nothing else, great as a template for this. Um, and there's the marker. Yeah, there's the center. Gonna drill a hole. I'm gonna measure a couple more times, but gonna drill a hole, uh, see where that ends up underneath. I'm gonna drill holes in the corners to see where I get to there and make sure I'm not gonna hit anything before I even start cutting with the jigsaw. Then I'll probably do a test cut somewhere in here uh, from one of the holes into uh, inwards and uh, make sure I got the right blade. I'm comfortable with the jigsaw. I haven't cut metal with that one yet. And uh, we'll start moving.
So this is what it looks like the first step for me was cutting the uh, four holes in the corners, really close to the corners to make sure everything lines up inside. So one corner, I did one in the center. Did all four corners. I'm gonna widen those holes now with the step up uh, bit and then uh, get the jigsaw in there and start going. But it's definitely in the right place. My measurements were correct, thank God. But uh, that's what it looks like. So another thing that I've learned from some videos online that I've watched is to tape the outside around the edges that you're gonna be cutting so you don't scratch the hell out of the roof with the jigsaw. I've also heard to tape the plate on the jigsaw. So whether that's overkill or not, tape's cheap and I don't mind doing it. So I'm gonna get started in a minute. I'm gonna do a little practice cut right there. Then I'll widen out these holes and we'll get this thing cut and done, right? Why not? fits success it's perfect so I'll file it down and uh, get it all prepped for the uh, adapter this adapter is clutch by the way it's so nice if I didn't have the adapter on here and I just took this because of this little rib here this little structural it would just wobble about a quarter of an inch on each side so I suggest at least if you have a 2018 high roof 170 like we do. I can't speak for other models, but this adapter works like a charm. So place that on there, get into the hole, no wiggle, solid. Just takes that little gap from here, that little space, fills that in, and this sits perfectly on top. So Impact Products on eBay. Again, not sponsored, just awesome products. Check them out. So I'm about to do a little Rust-Oleum there on the edges, anytime you cut metal, you wanna cover that up with, uh, I'm sure there's other brands, but Rust-Oleum to help uh, prevent rust on the open metal edges. Everything else has enamel and everything on it already, so we gotta add some to this, because now it doesn't, because we cut it. Um, I recommend putting a plastic bag inside, tape it around the hole, um, so that you don't just spill shit all over the floor. You know, whatever. But um, right now, I don't think I did it right, because <laughs> it's being sucked up into the hole, so I'm gonna have to, pop a little hole in that, I think, or something. But I'm gonna work on that next. So here's the hole. The Rust-Oleum, eh, it says 24 hours, but that I'm rushing a little bit. Um, I did two coats throughout the day today. It was pretty warm out today. It dried pretty fast. So I did two coats of that. It sealed pretty well. Um, next step is I am going to clean the edges. I already scuffed them with a scotch Bright pad. You're supposed to just dull the paint a little bit. You don't have to actually scratch it. But um, I did all that around the edges. Now I'm gonna clean everything with a little bit of uh, simple green, which is kind of my favorite, and then just some water and a rag and just get that all that everything off. And then I have to tape around the outside of the, the adapter, which will sit on here just like this. And around the outside, I will tape a quarter inch, uh, I will tape a line a quarter inch away from all that. And that's gonna be to let the adhesive squeeze out just around the edges there and then I will uh, run my fingers across with, a, with gloves on, obviously, and uh, make a nice bead of that adhesive around the edges. So there's the uh, quarter inch tape line around it. I basically clamped it down to keep it in place and then taped, leaving a quarter inch gap all the way around it according to the instructions for the adapter. And uh, that's where the glue is gonna come out, ooze out, and I'm gonna make a little bead of it there to keep it sealed. It'll all be sealed with Flex Seal at the end anyway, but this is the instructions for this. I am clamping it right now. I'm kind of thinking because it's slightly wobbly. It's a little flexible. I'm probably gonna clamp it after I glue it too. So I'm gonna get some strips of the uh, other expanded PVC that they sent me and clamp it down lightly around like four edges. Gonna clean this edge a little bit now. I've got the tape mark like you saw. Just gonna give it a quick wipe down. Just real quick again with a clean rag. 
because it's still getting a little windy. Um, and then I'm gonna open up the cog glue, the 3M window well, and get going. All right, so it's coming out here, and what we need to do is three eighth-inch beads along this whole piece. So I've left the small end of the tube. I didn't cut any off. I want to see kind of how that works out for me. So what I'm going to do is get it nice down there and do... Now, I was instructed by... Oh, God, I forget the guy's name. To get this in a caulk gun can, in a caulk gun style because it's super hard to squeeze out of a little squeeze style. And I will say they are correct. I'll give them a shout out when I figure out who told me that. But another one of the videos I was watching online. And they are very correct. Very, very correct. So I don't know about you, but that looks like an eighth inch, eighth inch bead to me. So it might be a little smaller. Yeah, it looks more like an eighth, eighth inch to me. Yeah, that's better. Good thing this stuff doesn't dry right away because it's going to take me quite a while to get it on here. That's, uh, that's it for me today. I'm gonna take the tape off, but um, this is done. Um, I'll meet you guys back in the morning and we'll, we'll get the, uh, I'm gonna get the fan in. That's gonna be tomorrow. Hopefully early, get it done. Go on a mountain bike ride. Later. Hey everybody, so on the roof one more time. Another morning, another day, same clothes. Um, but uh, we're gonna start working on the, uh, finishing up the uh, Max Air fan install. Uh, I'll show you guys everything you need for the last day. Of the, install here and we'll, we'll get it going. So here's everything we got for today. We got the flange, which isn't attached yet, but it's sitting on top of the adapter. I'm gonna test fit everything in a minute. Uh, I got our drill so we can do a couple of, well not a couple, uh, 15 pilot holes. Uh, butyl tape to seal that up. Um, all the screws and everything, a couple of clamps to clamp it while I drill the pilot holes. I'm gonna test fit the fan right now, make sure I have all the orientation, everything correct, um, and get that going. Afterwards, uh, when we're done with all of that, I'm gonna bring up some Flex Seal and start uh, sealing this thing up, spraying around the edges there and uh, spraying over all the screw holes and get this thing weather sealed and we'll be done for today. So yeah, stay tuned, keep it up. So I was having a little bit of trouble up there getting everything to line up and uh, so I took it back down to the garage and the problem was I couldn't get to these holes with the fan on. They just weren't lining up. So I got a tip from Adventure in a Backpack. Well, we've gotten a lot of tips from. Thanks for all your advice and all your videos. They're great. And, um, but now if you just kind of slide those metal uh, receiving pieces there for the screws up a little bit, about an eighth of an inch, you can get them to line up and then even line up with the hole it looks like in the plastic. So I think it's gonna drive the fan down a little bit once we start to tighten up those screws. So I think I'm kind of good with the way this is lining up now. I just wanted to kind of make sure and see all that happen uh, down here comfortable in the garage before doing it on the roof in the heat right now. So I think that should do it. I'm gonna get up there and get it done. So there you have it. There's the butyl tape lined around the outside. I did it in one long piece instead of the separate pieces that they gave me. I bought a roll and I'm gonna put the seam in the rear. Um, so this way if any, actually this is the seam here. So that seam's gonna go in the rear and if any driving water comes from the front, at least there won't be a gap in the front. I don't think it makes a difference. I'm gonna seal the hell out of this thing, but I've seen that from uh, Ken Tube, Ken, Ken, Keen Tube, I forget. But thank you for the great tips. Your videos are great. And um, yeah, here we go.
right, so there's the flange in with all the screws. A little bit of Buell tape oozing out, not too bad. I'll trim some of that off, but actually, I don't even... Yeah, I'll trim that one off, but maybe a little bit of that one, but it's not too bad. All right, so it's ready for Flex Seal. I cleaned and dried around the edges where I need to apply the, well, tape and the Flex Seal. About a quarter inch left the gap there so we can get everything in there and have a nice round the edge with the Flex Seal around everything. This is a rubber sealant. I'll show you the can in a sec. We're gonna spray over all the screws and the entire flange and onto the roof of the car to give it some seal. Um, and we're gonna be using Flex Seal which is a white, I got the spray, I wish it was a little less windy today, we'll see how it goes. Um, and this was recommended by the guy that um, sold us the adapter. All right, so we're gonna see how it goes, I'm gonna wait for the, I'm gonna go in between each gust of wind, I think, right now, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Stay tuned. So that's it for now. I sprayed the flex seal around all the edges there. Um, I'm probably going to add more tape because it's a pretty wide spray. Um, so I'll probably add more tape around the edges for the next coat. And if it gets any windier, I'm contemplating just going to get the can and brushing it on um, as opposed to spraying it because they do sell that. And uh, I'm going to use it for more uh, stuff along the way with the van build. So I wouldn't mind having a spray bottle and a can. Uh, not spray bottle, spray paint uh, and a can. So uh, I'm going to contemplate that and... Um, see if I can get that to come out a little better. Uh, we'll see how the wind goes. But um, so far, so good. Gonna let that coat dry. All right, so we're ready for the next coat. And um, I, like I said earlier, I, I, it's a little windy. You can tell right there with the garbage bag. But um, I went and got Flex Seal on a can over at Ace Hardware, it's right around the corner. So uh, I'm just gonna brush this on now. I'm, so I don't have to deal with the wind. Plus, I really need to get in these cracks and around the, around the uh, screws and everything. And I just kinda wanna goop it on, you know what I mean? So, I'm uh, gonna get ready for the second coat in just a second. All right, everybody, coat number two is done, and if you're gonna use Flex Seal, I would totally recommend, well, I would definitely recommend getting uh, it in a can and brushing it on. These results are way better than the spray can that I used. I took the guy's advice at Home Depot, and he was a really nice guy, and maybe worked for his uh, application, for his RV. But this, for me, especially on a windy day like today, but honestly, even if it wasn't windy, this is coming out way better. I can really get it in and goop it on and get it all where I want it to be. And this is supposed to turn into like a, like a rubber, waterproofing material. Um, I haven't used too many products that are uh, called like uh, as seen on TV, but this one came highly recommended and, and it seems to be working really well. We'll see uh, when it rains. But yeah, there's code number two. I'm probably gonna do about four of these, so um, stay tuned for a couple more. So Allison's back home. Making my debut. That's right. Top and, of the uh, van. That's right. First time on top of the van. It's got a big hole in it. Don't fall through, I think you fit through there. Anyway. <laughs> She's uh, finishing up, she's doing the fourth coat, fourth and final coat of the Flex Seal for the, uh, to seal the uh, Max Fan um, pole. So yeah, just finishing this up, just one last coat. I don't really think it needed it, but this is to kind of clean things up a little bit too. And uh, yeah, after this, we'll let this one dry overnight and I'll probably, we'll install the fan tomorrow and just screw it in. I mean, we know it works, it fits in there. So really, we just gotta tighten it down. That's pretty much it. Get it, Allison. You got it. Got it. Hey everybody, so we're, we're all done with the uh, flex seal on the, the vent fan hole. And uh, it looks like it came out really good. We'll show you a close up look uh, in just a moment. But um, just came up here, basically um, inspected everything. We removed the tape last night after the fourth coat. And uh, it looks great. I would totally recommend going with the flex seal. Um, but I have no experience yet as to whether or not it's gonna leak. So we'll see what happens when we get inside. But um, we're just getting ready to install the fan. It's just four simple screws. Uh, we'll show you guys that in, in uh, a little bit closer look in just a second, so stay tuned, we'll get it finished. Hey all, so here's the closer look at how the Flex Seal came out around the edges of the fan. Uh, we did like three thick coats. There's a couple of things stuck to it because unfortunately it was kind of windy and we don't have a space big enough to do this indoors. But um, it's probably gonna look worse than that after a few months, so we're okay with it. Still looks better in a sick of Flex floating all over the place. Um, but yeah. This is all set. Uh, this is kind of what we did. We did like three thick coats and then we, we removed the tape, did a little bit more uh, tape, about a quarter inch, even past the last line. And that was like our thinned out layer to gradually just kind of get rid of that hard line from the tape. You can still kind of see it here. But um, it looks great. I like it. All the screws and everything looks perfectly sealed up. Um, we're good to go. So we're gonna get started on uh, putting in the vent fan. The one last thing I want to show you one more time is that we got this tip from, um, 
Adventure in a Backpack, uh, Nick and Steph, I believe, and they did a lot of great tutorials that we've we've actually learned a lot from, and uh, and uh, they they mentioned that the holes don't line up exactly, and I showed you in an earlier video that when I did try to line them up at first, they really don't. So they recommend just pushing these clips up about an eighth of an inch above. And actually when you sit the fan on that, and we'll show you in a minute, it actually does line up pretty well. Um, and that should catch the screw and then drive the fan down into the plastic holes. So we're hoping that works out well, but we'll get this thing finished up and we'll be done with this fan finally. All right, Allison? Right. Get it. All right, so here's the Max Air. Uh, I always say Max Air. I don't know why I've been saying Max Air this whole time. It's Max Fan. I think Max Air is the name of the company. This is the Max Fan Deluxe. I've been saying Max Air Fan Deluxe, but whatever. So this is the Max Fan Deluxe. And what we need to put this in is really complicated. We need a screwdriver and four screws. So first step is though, this needs to be open all the way to get it in because you can't get access to these screw holes until it's open. So we'll do it mechanically because it's not hooked up to power obviously yet. And we're just gonna crank this till it's all the way open. And that's pretty much all the way open. And then we wanna just drop it in and we're gonna line these holes up with these metal uh, receiving pieces on the flange and um, tighten it up. That's pretty much it. Uh, you definitely wanna make sure the wires go inside the vehicle because you're gonna need those later. And this obviously faces the back in its aerodynamic shape. So I'm gonna drop it right into the hole there. And the fan itself, I'm gonna get the cables in. The fan itself actually sits on the outside of the holes for the flange. So um, you can get in there and take a look at that if you want. So now this will sit here cleanly just over that and in that rubber gasket. Um, but there's no way water gets in there. That's just a block to get that inside. It would be any of these cracks. But um, now I'm just gonna grab the screws and see if we can get this sucker lined up and in there. Um, I'm definitely using a hand screwdriver because I don't want to break any of this plastic or anything. So I'm looking at the metal holes and it looks pretty good. Let's see. I'm just gonna press down on this a little bit. Yeah, that's definitely going in. So adventure in a backpack, thank you. That works quite nicely. And I think it caught it and kind of drove it down. I'm gonna do one on the opposite side before I finish this side up. But that looks pretty good. But I kind of want both sides to evenly press down before I just ratchet this side down. So I'm gonna move over here, just get this. And why don't I take the camera real quick and I'll show you guys a um, close up shot of the inside here on what this actually looks like. I don't know if you can see that. But that's it, kind of lining up with the holes and we're pushing it down to kind of get a little better in there. And it's gonna catch, it seemed to work pretty well, so. Hey guys, Allison here. We finally have the fan installed after four days. We're gonna take the plastic off. Uh, last step for the fan will be the electrical, so we'll be getting that installed soon. Yeah, it's done. Oh yeah. It's done. Good. First, like real project. Nice. Yeah, it's all done. All set. All screwed in. Beautiful. Fit really nicely. Yeah. And like Allison said, just ready for some electrical. But that's it for now. Hey guys, here's a quick video just showing you guys what it looks like from the inside. Um, I'm gonna trim off just a little bit of these screws. I don't want to take them all off, but I'll just cut the uh, sharp edges off with a Dremel. Um, and here's the electrical to get hooked up at a much later time. Um, and that's pretty much it. The inner flange will get attached to the ceiling that we install, uh, however far down that is. Um, but that'll be it when it's finished. That's pretty much it right now. Pretty simple, just time consuming, but I'm glad we took our time because the um, I really wanted to let the uh, flex seal dry thoroughly in between coats. So I think it came out well. Hey guys, it's Allison. Thanks for watching our Max Fan install video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions, just shoot us a comment. Uh, we love hearing from you all. And uh, we'll be posting a lot more van conversion um, content and tutorial videos. So if you want to keep hearing from us, hit the subscribe button below. Thanks.